G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Um, today I've got a really quick video that actually comes from a problem I needed to solve myself quite recently. Um, I was working on a project for a client and I needed to bulk reload some families into other families. Uh, one method I use to do this quickly is just to open up all the family files together, open up the nested family that I want to reload uh, to all those families at the same time, then save them all, close them all. It takes a lot of time. Um, there are a lot of apps out there that can do things like this. I'm going to do a really simple implementation today to show you how you can do it using the Orchid package. Um, now I do have a video talking about how to install the Orchid package. Please don't put uh, comments down there asking about it because it seems like everyone really struggles to install this package. Um, do go check out this video, which I'll show on the screen now, um, which will try to at least show you the basic steps you take to do it. Anyway, um, I'll be using Revit 2020 and Dynamo 2.3 as well as its associated Orchid version. Um, and we're just gonna be loading one family into multiple families um, in bulk. So let's jump in. So this is gonna be a fairly quick script build actually. Uh, most of this comes from the Orchid package, so we're gonna save a lot of time using it. So for context, I have a folder of families and then I have a component folder. And inside each of these families, this component is loaded, but it's out of date. So at the moment you can see that my component family is a piece of model text that says it's up to date. All my families are currently containing a nested instance of that. So if I open up one of these, we can see that this is currently out of date, even though it's the same family. So whilst we could open each family, and in this case, load in this uh, up-to-date component in order to update it, we obviously want to do it in a more fast uh, way, an easier way. Now this is a non-shared component as well, so we can't just do a batch load um, in a project environment. So in this case, we actually need to open each family um, and then load this component in. So we're gonna use Dynamo in order to do this. Now, I'm just running out of one folder here. Um, so often you would actually need to find these files inside a deeper directory system, um, in which case we would do what, what's called a deep search, where we actually look through subfolders as well. Um, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna do a shallow search. So in this case, just one folder. Um, so we're just gonna begin, uh, first of all, by getting our directory of families. So in this case, I wanna get a directory path. I'm gonna browse, in this case, um, to my folder, which I'm calling the run folder. And I'm going to make that an input for Dynamo Player. And in this case, you could call this something like directory to load family to. From here, we're going to get the contents of that directory. So I'm going to look for directory.contents and we're going to get the contents node from Orchid. Um, there is a directory contents node by default that comes with Dynamo as well, but assuming I'm already using Orchid, I'll just use this one as well. I'm gonna to switch to manual mode at this point because we're gonna be loading some files. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to directory and we can search for something here as well. By default, it's gonna search for asterisk, which means every file. Now the directory contents node from Orchid does filter out things like hidden files, read-only files, um, system files, I should say. So in this case, what we're gonna look for is a code block. We're gonna say asterisk.rfa, which means anything followed by .rfa. In this case, um, deep search by default should be set to false. Um, just in case you don't trust the package updates in future, you can just say it is false. So that that is always false, even if the package owner does change that behavior. But this means that it's only gonna search through the directory that we pointed to, um, not any of the subdirectories. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be opening each of these files in the background of Revit, so we don't actually see them open. Um, it's gonna do some things to them and then close them in the background. So if that doesn't make sense to you, um, just understand that Revit can actually open files without showing them to you. Um, it's a program that has an interface that shows you what it wants to show. So in the background, it can be doing many things that you don't actually see. And we can take advantage of that in a process like this. So in this case, I'm gonna look for document.background open. And this is gonna be from, in this case, the Orchid package. It also has the option to open detached files as well. So it can work with actual Revit documents, not just family documents. But in this case, we are just gonna be using it to open these files. Now I'm not gonna run and run my script at this point because I wanna run all of these things at once. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just freeze this particular node and keep working. I then wanna load in my other family that I'm gonna load into these documents. So I'm gonna look in this case for document.load family. And in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to get the document comma family node. So in this case, I'm gonna firstly into each of these documents be loading my family. Now in this case, this actually is a path to the family file. So we can just get a standard file path input. 
make that an input. And we can say this is the family to load. And by default, I'm just going to go and find uh, the component that we want to reload, which is this text marker. I'm going to make this the family to load, and I'm just going to set it to longest lacing. I don't know if you need to, but I like to set it to longest, just to make sure that for each document that's open, we're loading in that particular family. Now, if you have more than one family to load, um, you can work with list levels at this point. If you had a list of, a list of families to load into each document, um, I believe you could use the mixture of level one and level two to load in um, each family from a list to each document from the open, open node. But for now, we're just gonna work with one for one. What we need to do now is once it's loaded, we need to tell Dynamo to wait until this is finished. So what I'm gonna do is use the, um, the await node uh, from Orchid as well. Now this is uh, in lots of other packages as well. It might be called wait for, it might be called pass through. Essentially it just says until something is finished, don't pass something forward. So it gets Dynamo to wait uh, for something else to happen. So we're gonna pass through the documents that we already have open once the families have finished loading. And at the end, we're going to close those documents as well. So I'm gonna look for the document.close. And in this case, um, there's a few of them. I think this is the awkward one, yep. And we're just gonna set it to longest lacing as well, just to make sure that it shuts every single document, but I believe it probably sets itself to longest by default. So for each document, we are gonna close it, and by default, it's not going to save. We do wanna save, so we're gonna get a little code block with true. And that's it, that's the script. So um, let's actually run it and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna freeze, unfreeze this node. And before I jump forward, I will just quickly show you which version of Orchid I'm using, because this is a very common question. Currently I'm using the build on the screen here. I'm in Revit 2020. Um, so in this case, I believe my build probably isn't up to date, but I, I'm pretty confident that this should work in most versions of Orchid. Um, there is some changes that come in each package that sometimes lead to questions, but hopefully what I've done here works for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna run it straight from here. Um, if I go run, we should expect to see those families eventually update. Once we've opened them all, it's gonna start loading in that family each time. So we can see those backup files starting to appear and we can see now that each family is now up to date. So we've bulk loaded that component. It's saved and closed them all and that's it. That's how easy it is to bulk load nested components uh, into a Revit family. So there we go. Um, hopefully that was a useful technique. Now there's obviously a lot more steps to take in more complex processes. For example, maybe you want to look at all the nested families inside uh, that family. For example, when you open it and reload all the viable family candidates for reload. Now that's a more complicated workflow. It does involve firstly opening the documents, checking all the nested families, checking their name back on a directory to see which file path that family sits at, if any, and then reloading using sublists and levels. Um, I could probably cover that in future, but it is quite complicated, so I wanted to keep this quite simple and quick, um, just to give you the basic tools to start with. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I look, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.